A week or so ago, uh, Bode Bear asked a question about how to generate love or care for those that he found scary. And Loving Lamb gave a lesson about how she works with His Holiness's advice about uh, how, we, how to see all sentient beings as friends. And yeah, for me, uh, seeing all beings as friends is also just about connecting with love to all sentient beings and seeing, uh, connecting with them as a, that they want happiness and don't want suffering and that they're just like me in that way and holding them with a sense of care and affection, um, seeing all sentient beings as lovable. And yesterday, uh, just brought this strongly to mind with our discussion about how the community supports our practice. Um, and so I just wanted to share about that a little bit. Um, a while ago, Venerable Damsha did a BBC which was entitled An Experiment in Love, which um, has really stuck with me ever since, talking about how a monastery is an experiment in love in terms of how living in a monastic community is constructed and how we're held in this protective container um, with the six harmonies where we try and be in harmony in terms of body, speech, and mind, precepts, views, and requisites and how this protective container um, mm, allows us, a, shows us a way to um, connect with people that we might not normally engage with, with a loving mind, with a sense of care and affection. Um, yeah, because in a monastery uh, or an intentional community, um, we don't necessarily, we don't choose who we live with necessarily. We don't choose who come here. We don't necessarily, we're not living with people um, that we may normally associate with in lay life, with having similar interests or similar backgrounds or similar um, ways that we like to eat or even similar cultural backgrounds and things like that. Um, or even similar priorities. Like we might all be Dharma practitioners, but we might want to practice in different ways. Some like rituals more, some prefer meditation, some prefer service. Even the ways that we want to meditate aren't necessarily the same. But we're all here trying to move together in a similar direction, and then how do we make that work? And then also, um, particularly uh, in a monastery environment, it's like there's, there's no escape really. We're with each other 24 seven. It's not like this, the other environments that we might have been in before where um, we're with our family but we get a break by going to work. Or we go to work and we get a break by going back home. Or different things like that. Even with friends, it's like okay, we have this small container of space and then that's enough and I get to leave now. Um, or it's easy if we have a fight with someone or there's some just how many there, there's an escape route. Um, here we can still run to our rooms, but we have various mechanisms built in where we bow to each other each morning, we eat our meals together, we offer service together, we live, sleep, study, everything together. And in this way, um, we really have to work with our minds to um, overcome any difficulties that might arise, but also just to see each other much more clearly, less one-dimensionally than... Um, I think we can if we do have that escape route where we can just exit left when things get difficult. Um, and thinking about this, some verses um, from Nagarjuna's dream tale came to mind that Venerable Kadru uh, shared with us in the Awakening the Heart, Awakening the Kind Heart retreat a few months ago, where Nagarjuna shares five reasons why it's necessary to love all sentient beings. And the first two stuck out in relation to thinking about um, this experiment in love that is the monastery in terms of that we're all equal in wanting happiness and freedom from suffering. In being equal in that way, we are family. And then the second reason being that um, together we've experienced all kinds of suffering and all kinds of happiness. And having dwelt as one, therefore I am fond of them. And that second verse, I think, these verses are also kind of spread out um, the reasoning spreads across multiple lifetimes. But even just within one lifetime, living together in the monastery, these are true. And I think this is um, one pathway where a sense of fondness can develop with people that we might um, 
not have thought we could, or with complete strangers that we move into with the monastery, even if there are vast differences um, in opinions, perspectives, ways of doing things, because we get to see intimately just by walking throughout the day together that just like me, they want happiness and not to suffer in each decision that they're making with the food that they choose to eat, how they dress, how they walk, what they fill their um, spare time with. Um, and then together, having experienced various things, just, um, yeah, I think yesterday's conversation around how we support each other in our practice really brought this to life in terms of... Uh, <laughs> Um, our shared experience of, um, yeah, just living together, we get to, um, there's an intimacy that develops um, based on these shared experiences. Um, dwelling as one. And we have all these like colloquial phrases about family, um, you know, chip off the old block, apple doesn't fall far from the tree, we, we share blood. Um, and this is all just like you know, the power of lived experience, and it's not actually anything biological, because you know the, the whole um, thing of you know adopted children, as much as the family is as the those who are genetically related, or even you know, babies being swapped at birth didn't know, and there is no difference in the sense of family there, and the sense of family came to me quite strongly yesterday as we were all sharing how we. Um, support each other in our practice. We support each other in terms of receiving requisites and growing and learning. And yeah, we are family through that intimacy of just sharing, specifically sharing the Dharma together, which is so precious, but also sharing the difficulties and meals and forest work and kitchen cleaning or whatever it is through that, through these intimate moments, we get to see so clearly, oh, just like me, you're wanting to be happy, not wanting any discomfort. And that sense of intimacy, I think, allows us to have a sense of fondness and affection that can overcome differences, superficial differences in ways of doing things or opinions or things like that that can just cut through and it's like, no, I value, I have affection for you despite any of these superficial reverberations that might otherwise distract me from a sense of care. Yeah. So, and with that sense of intimacy, um, also comes, I think, this deep sense of joy in others' joy, um, in people's accomplishments, in their growth, in their achievements. And I think this stands out so much in contrast to the competitive environment that um, we have um, outside with, with capitalism and school systems and grading systems where we're competing against each other, we're pitted against each other, often um, as opposed to collaboration. Um, whereas I've seen, and it's something that I've been actively working on in terms of wanting to rejoice at others' growth and opportunities and um, how people shine um, and, and that the intimacy and the container of the monastic environment where we are um, so closely mingled, seeing clearly the ups and downs that we each have with each other, that um, it would seem ridiculous not to rejoice at others' growth and opportunity because it's so painful to do otherwise. Um, yeah. And then also just this flow of care that I think uh, is quite visible here in this container. Um, last night's chanting session kind of really brought this to life, um, where we had, um, yeah, some of the senior nods, and in, in, um, one person wasn't available to do something, so then um, uh, Venerable Chuni inviting Venerable Kunga to step up and do the bell ringing for the first time. And then various people are helping, getting in place, and now she's bowing, standing up. And I, I don't even know whose arm it was, but an arm stretched forward to fix up her robes. Someone went and got her a cushion so she could sit down when she was there because she didn't have a chair. And just this flow of care um, to, for someone to grow and to um, take an opportunity that they hadn't had before. And it was just very joyful. Um, 
Yeah. And Venom, yesterday, Venable Jigme's uh, encouragement and holding of the Vinaya space as well to have this conversation where we can all connect in with how we support each other. And uh, yesterday, with um, Munsal again being encouraged to do the Heart Sutra, which she did very beautifully, um, just this flow of care and encouragement and fostering that uh, there's a sense of joy and affection in others' growth and shining that. Um, again, I think affirms this sense of fondness and affection that overcomes um, this othering that I think is at the root of like um, the fear of how could I expand love to all sentient beings? How could I see all sentient beings as friends? And it comes back to this, like starting where we are with who we're surrounded with. Um, and then, yeah, which I think in this container that we have here at the monastery is quite unique, but it applies to anywhere in terms of through connecting with our shared experiences, really seeing that others want happiness and not to suffer. And in that way, working to eliminate any suffering because any suffering is to be dispelled, not just my own. And any happiness is to be rejoiced in, not just my own. Um, and from really working where we are in whatever family or workplace or container that we're in, through that, then we can expand it out. Um, and then, yeah, working in these immediate spheres where we can um, really get a taste for uh, seeing others just like us. Then we can expand that feeling to those that are less familiar in more and more vast ways so that um, encompassing all sentient beings isn't so far away. <laughs>